Why, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Dogboat Fifi3, and welcome back to Art of Iron 4 Kaiser as New England. Last video, I think we built a bridge. We're working on an airport right now, or did we already finish that? I think we might have already finished that. Anyway, we built an, uh, an airport over there. We're working on uh, reconstructing some finance corporations. And uh, we are just uh, having ourselves a grand little time. I'm recording a few more parts, and then I think I'm going to swap on over. Well, I might swap over to TNO and start recording some parts of that. Uh, cause I'm hoping to get back in the swing of uh, double uploads. I don't want to overextend myself too much, but... Um, let's see, first I've got to check and see... I put it up to poll. It's not a binding one yet. Everyone wants to see Margaret Thatcher. I don't really want to play Margaret Thatcher. Um. Could it maybe Mac Macmillan. Or Malding. Um. I don't really want to do Thatcher because I think a fair few people have already done it because, you know. <coughs> Margaret Thatcher is dead. That's always a, a classic meme. Apologies for the error rate, but then again, you're, you're, you're watching me, so you you, you got to kind of prepare for that. Um, I was actually kind of tempted to be SLP, mainly because of the conclusion of one event chain. Um, but... I don't... I only have thumbnail... I have thumbnails with the uh, England... Like the not socialist variant of it, and if you go SLP, uh, you change you change a flag. Which one? I'm not a fan of flag, which isn't the biggest deal. Uh, but two, uh, it feels a little off to me not have the right flag. Um, and I don't know if I really want to do NDP, so I might do Macmillan England, honestly. Which sucks, that one event change is going to end pretty sadly. But, uh... You know what, that's that's good drama. That's that's good drama. So, um... I, I shouldn't be complaining too much. Can we organize... Safe houses? Because it says we can. Oh, it's not popping up. Anyway. Um, we'll wor I'll worry about that... After I go ahead and, uh, get to recording. Puerto Rico declares independence. Hmm. Response of a continued economic woes from the Great Depression, Secretary of Commerce Harry Hopkins has announced an additional wage increase for workers under the WPA agreements for workers in the rural area of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. The program now sets a new wage at three ninety a month for more to more than 82,000 workers. The rural areas of New England, Hopkins argues that the wage earners, they are only 45% of a national average, but with this new increase, will be getting 53% of that average. This gives the impression of comparative underpayment in the North on the WPA. Nonetheless, opposing congressmen who are opposed to government intervention in the economy find Hopkins' legislation too radical. Critics find themselves uncertain as to whether or not Hopkins' wage increase will actually benefit the rural farmer, especially since WPA wages can deter be determined by a single person. To quell a doubt among the working class and politicians, Hopkins have helped organize the Community Mobilization for Human Needs, an organization dedicated to sharing the cost of relief between local, state, and federal governments. A fair wage. Okay, I can do that. I just gotta do that, and I can... Yeah, okay, I see now. It's it, it's spare infantry weapons. I, I see what we, I have to do now. So we got that done. Well, we need a mass. Extra infrastructure, which I think we're... It says we're maxed out infrastructure. So the parkway doesn't make the most sense. Um, I 
Let's go ahead and modernize the Rochester and Syracuse Railroad. Well, the Great Depression struck our country. The flow of goods across the railway stalled to pitifully low levels. As rail workers began to be laid off, sections of New York Central Railroad have fallen into disrepair, which cannot stand during our rise from the slumber. There we go. From here, how do we develop a new upstate New York? We could do anti air. That might not be the worst idea, honestly. Sure, clear skies. And let's keep the ladies' promises for now. America's always stood as a refugee for the tired, poor, huddled masses, yearning to be free from the, the yolks imposed on them by foreign rules abroad. A lady in her lamp may be behind enemy lines. We can keep her fire burning and continue to prove to the world that America, while America may have stumbled, her doors are not closed. Beautiful. Um, research. Let's go ahead. Um, let's do radio detection. Why not? And then, uh, I don't know what fucking. Let's do special forces, actually. So we are kind of going down that path, technically. Um, we have the officer corps. Which we don't have time. The ability to select a doctrine yet, it seems. So I think we need experience. Which I should probably be, uh,. Exercising these guys in so I can get said experience. Go with Santiago. Um, but yeah. Um. Ooh. An experience of ski travel shook the world view of amateur skier and insurance agent. Agent Nat Charles Minot Dole in 1936 that would lead him to spirit a national organization dedicated to ski safety and rescue. On a ski trip in Stowe, Vermont, Dole fractured his ankle and no, had no, he had no one to save him but his friend Frank Edson, who just happened to pass by. Two months later, Edson went on his own ski race and fractured his ribs and arms while also suffering from lung collapse. The severe in injury led to Edson's unfortunate death and would have a lasting impression on Dole. The president of the National Ski Association, Roger Langley, asked Dole to chair a ski accident study for the NSA, set up patrols for the 1938 National Downhill and Slalom races. The success of this little project convinced Langley to ask Dole to charter up a provisional patrol on a national basis throughout the United States. Dole took heavy inspiration for the Parson Dienst, a Swiss patrol that in Davos, Switzerland, formed his own ski patrol. However, unlike the Swiss patrol, members of the American patrol did not charge for rescue or care. His national ski patrol is centered around the motto, service and safety, while with patrols mandated to take extensive courses to fill Dole's requirements and standards for effective and efficient patrollers. Since the organization is entirely volunteer, Dole created an awards program based on local and national levels. The awards program covers various com amendable skills and advancements such as leadership, first aid, ski mountaineering, and avalanche training. We watch out for each other. Can I get... I can't really... Okay, we still gotta work on two at a time, which is okay. Um... I was thinking... Um... Probably get these guys in a separate little army. Um, I'll go ahead and scrap this line. I do kind of want... We had initial, we were initially on garrison order, which I think actually is not a bad idea. So we can garrison these guys for now. Alright, we can't quite... Uh... There's only two guys. We'll add them on as... We, we'll get extra guys as we go along, of course. And from here, we'll go ahead. Yeah, just kind of, uh. Area defense. You don't need to guard the coastline. You just try to do that for now, fellas. I'm a bit more manageable to do that. So that'll get rid of our limit limited recognition. Hmm. 
Over the last several months, many of the current and former workers along the Hudson River came today to pitch in their earnings and save the company collectively. Despite the scarcity of the Great Depression and still ravages of the country, these men owe, mo mo owe much of their success to a quartet of women who helped start the company. Stamming from her work in the 20s as part of a women's trade union league, Wood Overlate Franklin Roosevelt, Anna Eleanor Roosevelt, create a small factory to provide supplementary income for local farming families. Marion Dickerman, Nancy Cook, Carolyn O'Day, and other contacts from the Democratic Party in New York helped finance the project at the Roosevelt Estate. Valkyl Industries hoped to capitalize on the popularity of a colonial revival by creating items such as furniture, pewter, and homespun clothes using 18th century methods. With Nancy Cook's failing health and lingering effects of the Great Depression still being felt throughout New England, Eleanor made the hard decision to close down the factory. Spurned to fight for the kindness bestowed upon them, the workers from Valkyl sent letters and petitions to Dutchess County government officials pleading for funding for the business as part of the Second Square Deal projects approved following the outbreak of the Second American Civil War. True American spirit. So that's what old Eleanor is up to. That's neat. I mean, I, I know we can, um, I think we can still elect her. We got a couple options for ambassadors to Canada, which is interesting. Stability, research speed, act. Okay, what do we want? Because we can get another one of these guys. Brilliant lawyer might not be the bad idea. Wasn't there another sort of... Let's go ahead and get Dean Aikson. I assume that's how you say, that's probably not how you say that. I don't know. Uh, well, we're working on expanding the um, safe houses once again. Good. I'm glad I uh, figured out how to work that because I was just going to leave it hanging for a while. So figuring that out is uh, pretty nice. Um, shoot, what do we want? Um, I don't know if it's really worth working on any of these at this time. Um, I guess we could do fuel storage. Guangxi has joined the northern Jili clique. Go ahead and add those boys to that. Did we not finish that? That's a little weird. I thought we... Oh, reassure versus reconstruct. I understand now. I think we get the Green Mountain boys. Dating back to Ethan Allen's Green Mountain Boys of the American Revolution, the hills of Vermont and New Hampshire have always had a strong military tradition. The elite infantry was infamous for the fear they struck in enemy ranks, so we should seek to emulate our forefathers and our methodology in the battle against tyranny. That will be good, I think. Weapons cache looted. Excellent. And I think we'll eventually, we might want to do the CCR after this. I think that would be pretty solid. Although we could under, uh, establish the Underground Railway, that might be solid as well. There goes Belgium. Heavily inspired by the mountain infantry of Austria and Italy during the Velt Krieg, Massachusetts native and ski enthusiast Charles Minot Dole, expedition the High Art Command, can create units dedicated to fighting in harsh terrain. Dole is also founder of National Ski Patrol, founded in 38. From a proposal by Roger Langley, president of the National Ski Association. I was about to say I know this guy. Thanks for the lobbying efforts of Dole, the National Ski Patrol was appointed 
by the High Command to recruit and vet soldiers from the 10th Light Infantry. While some uh, in the military command were initially skeptical, Dole suggested that perhaps it would be best to make, quote, soldiers out of skiers instead of skiers out of soldiers. Formed at Fort Drum in Northern New York, the 10th Light Infantry had been designed as a mountain warfare unit intended to help break through enemy defenses in treacherous terrain and weather. Situated in the freezing Adriandak Mountains, the men of the 10th also undergone rigorous mountain and arctic warfare training. He also instructed to scout and map out mountain trails and train as a nation to find itself griped with fear of infiltration and sabotage. In this new vacuum, aircraft have crashes on New England soil, but 10th of the National Ski Patrol found themselves acting as fast responders, rescue men capable of forging through the worst of New England's winters. With sub-zero temperatures for nearly half a year, the hazardous and perilous conditions formed bonds of camaraderie among the tightly knit and disciplined unit. The harsh conditions are nothing for our men. Excellent. Get those guys out of there. He was joined the Reich Pact. Interesting. Mm, we'll eventually want to ensure the clear skies. Let's work on the CCR for now. With large numbers of our young men out of work, families are struggling to make ends meet. The Civilian Conservation Corps will help provide eligible young men with meals, housing, and employment to help provide for themselves and their families. Ooh, we can unlock a land auction. I don't know exactly if anything has even changed. Um, I think I'll do a uh, grand battle plan. No, actually, I'll do superior firepower, I think. And we unlock that instantly. It's a neat little change. We can get a chief of army. Actually, we might have wanted to do this a while ago. Let's get Leslie Richard Groves Jr., even though we already fired him. Uh, this man has a lot of jobs, what can we say? Yeah, the, uh... CSA is doing a little, um... Uncomfortably well, I'll be honest. Then what exactly does real... I think that changes... Sure this means something, the, uh... Changing of development in these regions. Well, there goes our guys there. Hmm. In a brief conference today at St. Lawrence in Canada, the Canadian and American engineers met to discuss possibility of a two-stage plan of power development. President Joseph Martin Jr. met with Canadian Prime Minister to discuss the planned industrial project outlined by the American members of Joint Board of Engineers in 26, hoping to foster goodwill and tensions between the nations. Project plans to construct a dam on... Barnhalt Island, with one power station being built near Messina, New York, on the American side, another power house built on Cornwall on the Canadian side. While plans have indeed been drawn up, it is unknown as to when construction on the dams will actually begin. The meeting's successful conclusion and friendly atmosphere, however, solidified relations between the two nations, and there is no doubt that the future will seek further cooperation between the American and Canadian nations. Oh, damn. Are we going to have to rebuild the, um... Ohio one. Can't save them all. Established in 1930, the Toll House has become a rather fashionable New England staple. In particular, the Inn's matron has been renowned throughout the country for delicious recipes, including what she describes as chocolate chip cookies. A favorite spot for young and old, and even those in politics like Joseph Kennedy Sr., Ruth Graves Wakefield embodies the New England mother in her passion and dedication and evident from her baking. 
Born Ruth Jones Graves, Wakefield grew up in eastern Massachusetts and worked as a home economics teacher and a hospital dietitian. In 1930, Wakefield and her husband, Kenneth Donaldson Wakefield, bought a tourist lot in Whitman in Plymouth County. A junction located halfway between Boston and New Bedford it was a place where passengers had traditionally paid tolls. Passengers traditionally paid tolls, changed horses, and ate home-cooked meals. Ruth cooked and served all the food at the end, gaining cult following of fans who enjoyed her lobster dinners and desserts, but indeed a dessert cookie that has earned her national fame. Nicknamed the Chop Chip Cookie, Wakefield claimed that she had chopped bits from a Nestle semi-sweet chocolate bar to a cookie. While reporters incorrectly stated that the move was a mistake, Ruth claimed that she intentionally sought to create a cookie with a delicious bite of chocolate. The cookies reached soldiers stationed in Massachusetts, many of whom have written letters requesting it from their families at the, while at the front lines. The nation that then became infatuated with a cookie with Miss Wakefield agreeing to give Nestle the rights to the Toll House cookie name for one dollar and a lifetime supply of Nestle. Indeed, they have become a national favorite, enjoyed by Americans young and old. How delicious. Fuck, now I want cookies. God damn it. Republicans have won the Greek referendum. Let's go ahead and do the Bearbrook Camp. Using government funds to purchase land at a marginal agricultural value, the place will serve as our home base for infrastructure projects across the region. Get some infrastructure in New Hampshire and allows us to do some other stuff there as well. Sounds like a solid plan to me. Hmm. All we'll do rural electrification. Start that uh, off this video. As much as ninety percent of rural America was left without any access to electricity at the tail end of Hoover administration, particularly affected were northern states of Vermont and New Hampshire. We need to ensure that all citizens have access to it. Well, there we go. We have some neat options here. I like all the little flavor text for all these little projects. It, it's a it's a nice little bit of world building. How's the infrastructure in Albany? We might want to. Now, the city of Albany was long. Real has long relied on the flow of the Hudson River to provide water for its population. To the end of any stoppage, if a city may be cut off, new reservoir would provide upwards of 10 days emergency supply to the city at any time. So let's do that. With that, let's also go ahead and stop this video for now. Thanks as always for watching, however. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like this video, leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you want to see more of this content in the future, hit the sub button for more uplo uh, for uploads every weekday, as well as occasionally Saturdays. If you have any comments, feedback, concerns, check out... Uh, the comment section down link below, leave something there. I read all the comments I get. I appreciate any other feedback you might have for me. If you want to chat play games of any sort, check out my uh, Discord down link below. If you want to send a few bucks money a month, I have a Patreon. If you want to see me do sort of live that see me do this sort of stuff live, I have a Twitch. I'll put you down in the description box below. That's really it for now, folks. Thanks as always for watching. My name has been Dogwell333. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.